This is cross multiplication with fractions, problem number four. First step we need to take is make sure it's a proportion and that we can actually use cross multiplication. So proportion is when you have two equal fractions. I see an equal sign and then I see two fractions. So this is a proportion. We're missing a variable. So this is a situation where you can solve the proportion using cross multiplication. All right, so step two, we can jump right into cross multiplication. I'm going to draw my parentheses with the equal sign in between. And then I'm going to multiply 1 7th by t. And when I draw t when it comes to math, I put a little loop on the end because if you don't put a loop on the end and you're doing a large math problem, a T can sometimes look like a plus sign. So mathematicians usually say you should curve your T when you're doing math so you can tell the difference between an addition sign and a T. Just a helpful piece of advice. All right, now we're going to multiply this way, 3 and 1 fifth times 10. 3 and 1 fifth multiplied by 10. On the left side, 1 seventh multiplied by t is the same as 1 seventh t. And then if I'm going to multiply a mixed number by an integer, I need to change both to fractions. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 5 and get 15 add the numerator 1 to get 16, and that becomes my new numerator in this improper fraction. Remember, the denominator stays the same, so just put the denominator as 5 still, so it's still 5. To change 10 to a fraction, in fact, to change any integer to a fraction, just put it over 1. 10 divided by 1 is the same thing as 10. And then we're able to multiply across. 16 times 10 is 160. And 5 times 1 is 5. Now I realize this is going to be some messy math. So when I see that I can reduce 160 over 5, I'm going to take this chance to reduce and make the problem easier. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take 160 and just divide it by 5 because I see that 160 ends in 0 and um, 5 can go into a number that has 0 in the 1's place. So I can take 160 and divide it by 5. 5 goes into 16, well, 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. We subtract, we get 1. We cannot ask ourselves the question until we bring down a number. Now we can ask, how many times does 5 go into 10? Exactly 2 times. 5 times 2 is 10. We have no remainder, nothing to bring down. So that simplified our problem to 32. So that will help us a lot. So 1 7th t is equal to 32. Now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and extend this page a little bit so you can see this better. We've completed step 2, cross multiply. Now we can divide both sides by the coefficient. The coefficient is 1 7th. 1 7th is being multiplied by t. The inverse of multiplication is division, so we can divide both sides by 1 7th. We're dividing by 1 7th because the 1 7th is the number that's keeping t from being alone. 1 7th divided by 1 7th equals 1, so we're left with 1t is equal to, and this is a complex fraction because it is a fraction that contains a fraction. Step 1 in solving a complex fraction is to make sure the numerator and the denominator are both fractions. So I'm going to change the integer 32 to a fraction by placing it over 1. I'm going to exaggerate the fraction bar in between and then record the denominator of 1 7th. Step 2 is to trade out 
this fraction bar division symbol for a division symbol that looks like this. And then remember that you record the numerator first, and then you record the denominator second. And this is going to be equal to 1t, which is the same thing as t. Then I'm going to keep, change, reciprocal. So I keep the first fraction, 32 over 1. I change the division to multiplication. And then I record the reciprocal of 1 7th. Then I multiply the denominators and the numerators. 32 times 7. Let's see what we get. 2 times 7 is 14. I carry the 1. 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So I get 224 over 1. And 224 divided by 1 is just 224. So 224 is my final answer. If you were to plug in 224 in for t, 224 over 10 would be equal to 3 and 1 fifth over 1 seventh.